So today I've got for you a checklist of, uh, of, of um, WordPress and blogging techniques, and I'll remind you where to get that at. So go to your computer, go to your desktop. On the desktop at the top left, open the computer window. So you want to double click the computer window there. And then you've got these drives and my, uh, my network drive is right here, network location, classroom data drive Z. Double click that. And you can scroll down to find my folder which is campus blogging, campus blog. Double click campus blog and you'll see the notes that we, uh, some notes that I wrote last time the blogging ideas that we talked about together, the syllabus, and then this also. I did make it available to you last time, but today we'll, we'll actually read it and we'll do it. So when you see blogging uh, checklist, you want to click and drag that to your desktop. Don't just double click it, drag it to your desktop. And then a little bit later during the break, you can print it if you'd like. But for the moment, drag that checklist from my folder to your desktop. Double click it, we'll take a quick look at it, and then we'll actually apply it on our sites in a moment. So double click to view the checklist. If you get a pop up about untagged document, just cancel that. And if you have this sidebar that gets in your way here, you can close that sidebar by clicking the Tools button at the top here. That should close that so you can read more of the, of the handout. But here what I've got is um, a variety of, uh, of points in a variety of topics, um, which we'll talk about together right now, and then we will actually do it. But if you notice, in general, I've got three big sections. There's planning, there's the section of writing, and then the section of promoting. So the actual writing part is the longest section, but the other two are obviously very important. So as I said, we'll look at it briefly, and then we'll actually do some of this, or uh, most of this in, in the class today. So I've got a section about planning, which is will get us into a discussion to piggyback on what we've talked about previously. Decide on a hosted or self-hosted solution. Remember last week what we did was we created a WordPress.com account. And so that's going to work great for us to a certain point. And then we're going to see the limitations of getting the free solution. So I'm recommending eventually to graduate to your own server. And I'll talk about which servers I recommend and, and that sort of thing. Because then you'll have full control of your website. Whereas if you've got it on WordPress.com, there's limitations. So on that point, let me segue a moment over here. People then always ask me, okay, I'm ready to start my blog or my website. Where should I set it up at? Because to get your own little piece of the internet, you need to buy two things. Unfortunately, there's really no free ride to get on the internet. There are some examples, but they're limited. Uh, you need two things. So if you also want to look at this and you open your web browser, when I open my web browser, it goes to the college's website. And there's two things we're looking at. One is the domain name, the address of the website, sdce.edu. Or I can go to plenty of other websites. I just need to know their address. That's their domain, their domain name. The other thing that I'm also looking at that I'm not really that cognizant of is what's known as hosting. All of these pictures and text and logos and all of that, they have to be saved somewhere. They're saved on their hosting account, also known as the, the server. So these pictures were uploaded, this text was uploaded, these links, they all exist on a server. It's like the hard drive um, that you might have on your own computer. So those are the two things we need to buy, domain and hosting. You can get them both from a variety of companies, but I'll mention three or four that I've personally dealt with or my company has dealt with. So one of the biggest ones is GoDaddy.com. 
they're pretty big. They've had Super Bowl commercials. So they're a big name in the world of, um, of, of hosting. So I'm going to load GoDaddy.com. You say, well, how much does, it, does this all cost? If I establish that I need to pay to get my website online, how much does it actually cost? Prices range a lot, and there's deals all the time with all of the companies. So here, for example, it says huge savings you don't want to miss, $2.99 for a .com the first year. And then it says two-year minimum registration requires subsequent years charged at $14.99 a year. So usually $14 to $18 a year is the average full price for the domain name. Something.com, something.net, something.org, .club, and a bunch of new domain names that have been recently released. There's .guru, .ninja, believe it or not. So there's plenty of, um, of .somethings, because the .coms have been taken. Lots of them have been taken over 25 years of the web. The one that you really, really, really want probably was taken a few years ago. But maybe one of these new .clubs or uh, .ninja or .me or something, those could still be available. Question? I had a question because it used to be dot com and dot net and then org is for uh, is it yeah governmental agencies and that sort of thing maybe originally what, what started was that these names were uh, these names were originally set up because a dot com was going to be a commercial entity or a company and then a dot net would have been some network of other websites connected with each other and a dot org could have been a nonprofit or maybe a governmental institution well, that would be dot gov, right? that's what I was about to say yeah, so so all of these names that that, that appear um, had a particular name uh, a particular meaning in the in the beginning but then the line the lines became so blurred that okay well the dot com that I wanted is taken I can get a dot net Technically, I might not have been fulfilling the original mission statement of the .NET, but things are so blurred now that it almost doesn't really matter what their original designations were. And now with something like a .club and a .photo and a .me and all of that, there's even more choices. Is, that, is there some kind of governing agency or somebody that releases those? Or I originally, originally the, um, there was a, there's this large organization um, uh, I forget what it stands for, but it's called ICANN, and it manages all of these uh, names throughout the world, but they've sort of delegated that over to all of these companies now. When the internet, or when the web was much smaller, you could buy your domain name from them, from like one of the big companies, but they've delegated that to so many global companies like GoDaddy and Bluehost and so forth that they all basically report back to the main company still, but they all represent the same pool of names globally. So it's not that if you go with GoDaddy, they're going to have names that you can't find on Bluehost. They're all reporting back to the original registrar. Yeah, they're all on the ICAMS database. Question? Yeah, um, companies buy these names up. How do you buy them from them? You can come right here to GoDaddy, Bluehost, or whatever else I'll show you, and you can bulk buy names. I mean, oh, okay. So if, if I have Victor... Dot com, I can bulk buy victor.com, .net, .org, .biz, all of them, so that no one takes that name. And um, that's something viable that you can do. And unfortunately, also, the dark side of that is that companies or individuals uh, spend a lot of money to buy all of these names to kind of hold on to them, to um, kind of uh, sell them at a premium to people that they really want them. I've seen a, a domain names easily go very, very expensive, hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Right here we've got $2.99, regular price $15. Someone might have bought victor.com and now wants to sell it to me for $500. The good news at least is that if I do buy that name for $500, that's just one time fee. After that it reverts back to $14.99. So it's not that you have to keep paying $500 every year. You've basically bought to transfer their, that ownership from them to you. And then it goes back to normal price. Yeah, you just open your email and then you attach the uh, the PDF to yourself and email it to yourself. Uh, let's talk about that when we have some lab time, please. Okay.
So GoDaddy.com is one of these companies. They've got here $2.99, but that's just for the domain. Remember I said there's, there's two things, domain and hosting. So if we go look at hosting for a moment, uh, there's going to be a variety of options, but I'll just go to the most basic option, which is in this case simply called web hosting. And then here we've got some levels, even in the basics, there's Economy, Deluxe, and Ultimate, and this costs $4.99 a month, but normal price is $6.99. Deluxe is $5.99 a month, and $8.99, and so forth. And then there's higher levels, higher tiers, with even more service. Depending what you need, you need to educate yourself on these different tiers. But for most of us, to start off with the Economy will work just fine, except for one thing. Notice here it says one website. So if I want uh, victor.com, but also victorsdesigns.com, that's two different websites. So then I'd have to buy another economy plan. If you go for the deluxe, you can use the same resources of that one account to create victor.com, victorsdesigns.net, uh, givememoney.biz, whatever. So if you go for a little bit more expensive, you, it's a better deal with GoDaddy. Other companies have other deals, which we'll look at in a moment. But again, what do you need? That really is best decided to ask yourself first, and then on one-on-one -on -one help, I could answer a little better. But GoDaddy, I've dealt with them since about 2001. Um, all these companies have pros and cons, um, and I've been pretty satisfied with GoDaddy. Mine came up as 99 cents. It's a good deal. GoDaddy. Really good deal. Here's another one here that we can go to bluehost.com. So GoDaddy, I've dealt with. Bluehost, I've dealt with. And so what they've got here is starting at $3.95 a month. Well, what's better, what's worse? You have to take a moment to educate yourself. Uh, they change this all the time, that if I tell you something concretely right now, they might change it in a few months. And they've all got this live chat or phone uh, support that you can call them. And just like you might um, price match... Uh, a refrigerator and such, you can do that with these companies and say, this is what I need, how much are you going to uh, charge me? Oh, well, I just got a quote from GoDaddy and they're going to undercut you. So then they try to give you better deals, perhaps. So I've dealt with GoDaddy, I've dealt with Bluehost, um, but the main thing is that you need to get a domain and hosting. They're going to try to sell you a bunch of extra features, but again, they're extra features. You can usually do really well with just the no-frills basic accounts and then uh, based on your usage or, or the statistics that your account gathers then you can decide okay actually I need to move up one more level because I, uh, I need more space, I need more hosting, I'm uploading a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. So Bluehost is another big one, I've dealt with this one, they're pretty good as well. Another one is called uh, hostmonster.com <laughs> I'm mentioning these because I've dealt with these so hostmonster.com uh, they've got another deal here what are their features of hosting uh, what are their domain deals at the moment and so they're all going to be very competitive with a bunch of features and tech support. Uh, most of these, all of these three that I've mentioned should have 24-hour tech support, so you can call them at midnight if you're having trouble. I was just on the phone with GoDaddy a couple of nights ago doing something very complicated. Uh, I called them up at, a, uh, at midnight or so, and we were on the phone for an hour because this was complicated stuff, and they walked me through everything. You know, I've been doing web design and such uh, for like 15 years now, but some things are really complicated, and so when it comes to server stuff, so that's why they're they're available. And so, oftentimes they're all they're all going to sell you uh, features like this right away. Uh, it's got WordPress. So, in class, what we talked about was we created a WordPress.com account, and it got us up and running quickly, but it's limited, limited because it's not going to have plugin plug-in features, which are extra little apps that improve your website. WordPress.com does not want to deal with plugins because plugins are from third-party companies. 
and WordPress.com therefore does not want to tech support someone else's software. So the way for you to get plugins is to go with the self-hosted solution, which is going over to GoDaddy or Bluehost or uh, HostMonster or a variety of providers. And what I would say about that is you may be tempted with, with like a local mom and pop shop, maybe better prices and so forth, but honestly, uh, you, you are better off with the larger providers because of their infrastructure. The little guys still oftentimes have to connect with the big guys to give you the connection to the internet. So they're going to be a middleman between you and the whole internet. If you go for one of the bigger companies, they have a director, a more direct connection to the internet as a whole, and therefore the speed and, and reliability of your site is better on the big providers. People come in all the time and ask me, is this one good? Is that one good? I don't know them all, but uh, taking a quick look on their website and they have a P.O. box in San Diego, honestly, that's not a big uh, selling point for me that they're local. I want to deal with a big company because they deal with a lot of traffic. These smaller companies might not deal with a lot of traffic and resources and such, so you might not get good results. And then once you buy an account at any one of these providers, there will be a button that simply says install WordPress. And then you have the full featured WordPress on your site. We won't be able to get to that point. That's much more technical. After all, we're dealing more about blogging. But one of the big first questions to ask yourself, are you going to do it for free on WordPress.com? Or are you going to invest and buy it at Bluehost or GoDaddy or HostMonster, etc.? We talked pre. Yes. WordPress.org WordPress uh, is is something really where you yourself might go to read the manual or get tech support and that sort of thing, but it's still being in set up and installed on your GoDaddy or Bluehost account. So it's not it's not part of WordPress.com. No, it's completely separate. It's on one of those companies you choose. We've got here, develop a serious concept. We talked about this last time, so I won't talk about it very much again. But again, what can you write about, especially on, on the long term? Blogging is something uh, that you want to do on the regular basis. You don't want to just uh, blog for three months and then forget about it. You want to keep it up for a while. So if you've got a serious concept like we talked about last time, um, that should help entice people to come back to your site. And also plan content that you would be happy to write about. If this is a chore, you know, what, ha what, what used to happen when they made you do your chores? You maybe did it a few times and then it was harder and harder for you to do your chores. We talked about variety last time also. So uh, I'm going to be a web designer, but I'm not always going to very focus all the time on just web design. I could do web development, I could do social media, I could do a variety of topics related. Number four, going solo or not. Are you going to write everything yourself? Are you going to have other people in your organization write as well? Are you going to have ghost writers, guest writers, or paid writers? So if you've got to run your business as well as do the blogging, you've got a lot on your hands. And then you've got to write consistently once a month, let's say. Well, eventually you might burn out. It might be complicated, time consuming. You just don't want to do it anymore. So you have other recourses. You can um, have other people in your company or organization also write, but again, don't burden the person in payroll, managing payroll, to then start blogging. If they don't want to do a task, it's going to show in the writing. And if this writing represents your company, then uh, bad writing means you have a bad company, right? So we've also got the options of ghostwriters. You could um, you could hire other people, or you could do trades, you know, service for service trades. But the point is other people writing in your name, literally. On your WordPress site it's going to say, you know, whatever written by John Smith, but someone wrote it for you. That's totally okay, that's totally viable. It's whatever you feel is the compensation for your ghostwriters. Related to that is guest writers. You can reach out to other websites other blogs that are related to yours and ask them, would you like to guest blog for us? What's in it for them is that they get a link back to their website, traffic, 
And what's in it for you is that you get articles, that you get blog posts, that you keep your blog going. And then, of course, here, paid writers. The problem with ghost writers, guest writers, and paid writers, and even others in the organization, is do they know what to write about like you do? Do they write in the same voice? Are they the same caliber of what you're expecting or putting out? Uh, because you can easily look up uh, blog writers, and you'll get uh, blog writers that will charge you $10 a post, $5 a post, $100 for a year of work, whatever. You'll get a variety of, of fees. The problem is you have to take the moment to, to, to check on them, to vet them, to see their work, their samples. Are they good writers for that cost? Maybe they are, but maybe they're reusing their blog posts over and over and over on five clients, and therefore you don't have unique content anymore, and that's detrimental for SEO. If you don't have unique content, that hurts you. If your same blog post is repeated over and over, that hurts you. So if you've paid a guest writer and they've been writing for you for six months, and then you come across that same blog post in four other websites, well, they made four times the money, but then that could hurt your SEO because that content is duplicated throughout the web. And the search engines don't like that. So that's stuff about planning. Any questions on that? I'm going to skip the writing section because we'll actually do it together. I'm going to jump down to promoting. Let's say you've done section one and you've written something in section two. Now it's section three, promoting. So all of these relate. I've got social for them and social for you. Social for them is that you want to make sure your readers can easily share to Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, etc., etc. If your content is good enough, people will want their friends to see, thus turning them into advertisers for you. So you want to have the ability to, for people to click share on your blog posts. We saw that we could do that with WordPress last time. And so you want people to easily be able to share for you, because then your content could go out to more people for free. Someone sees that, they share it on their Facebook, now their 40 friends saw it. They share it on their LinkedIn, now their 90 contacts see it. So they're free advertising for you, free marketers, free cheerleaders. So make it easy for them to share on social. You've got to deal with social for yourself. Share your content on your relevant social media channels. Share a link to your blog post on your personal LinkedIn, from the company Twitter, from your Instagram, etc. So I have a website, I have a blog, but I should also have a Twitter. I should also have a Facebook or other social networks that matter to my company. And when I post something on my blog, I should also share it to Twitter, to Instagram, to Facebook, to Periscope, whatever social network that you think will be useful to you. And it can be from the company. So Victor's Designs on Twitter, I can share it there, sure. But I can also share it on my personal LinkedIn. If, um, if I want myself to be a face of the company, if I don't want Victor to be associated with Victor's Designs, I don't have to. But if I want Victor to be associated with victorsdesigns.com, that's another avenue where I could be sharing my content. I might not have the same connections on the company Twitter as I do on the personal Twitter. So I can use both, the personal Twitter and the company Twitter, to share. Comments. I believe comments are enough transition phase, so this may change at some point. Allowing people to comment on your post could help generate more traffic. Remember to moderate, though. We saw that last time under the settings, that you can let people comment, and that's somewhat useful to SEO. I don't know the exact percentage or values and such. But this might also completely change. Comments may not be that relevant a year from now, two years from now, or the search engines may suddenly decide, yes, make comments relevant, but most likely the thing is still moderate them. Go in and delete the bad ones, ban the, the spam and the trolls. 
and that and WordPress makes it relatively easy to do that. So if you don't have those options turned on, see me during the break because we talked about it last time. And then I've got guest blogging. Offer to blog on other people's relevant sites. Add your expertise to their site. Your author page should have links back to your own blog or social media, thus driving traffic to you. As you become more well-known in your niche, this will help your SEO. So again, you don't want your website to be just the dead end. You want to have connections on other people's websites. And so when you write something for someone else, then um, you have your profile on their site, and your profile should have links back to your site. So people could uh, come from that other site to your site. You could get traffic from other people's sites. Any questions on this section? Okay, so this uh, central section of actually writing, we'll do it together right now. What we're going to do is you should open your web browser if you don't have it open yet. And let's go back to WordPress.com. WordPress.com. Again, if you've got your own site already all set up, that's fine. Log on to your site and we can do this. But if you created a WordPress.com account with us last time, let's continue to use it. And I had a good question previously about, well, uh, I've written this on WordPress.com, but later on I'm going to get Bluehost. What do I do? I'll show you that we can actually migrate. We can export what we've written here and then import it into your, into your GoDaddy WordPress. What we need to do right now then is go to WordPress.com and at the top right corner click Log In. Click Log In and then log in with the uh, account credentials that you that you set up last time. Right, so when you log into WordPress.com, as I said previously, um, it's a little cumbersome once you, when you first set it up. Um, and uh, the big idea, as I said last time, and as I'll remind you this time, once you log into your WordPress.com, the first thing you want to do on the top left corner is click on My Sites. I have more than one site. Uh, so notice I have a button up here that says switch site. You probably just have one site, so don't worry about it. But if I, you can have multiple sites on WordPress.com for a variety of topics. If you have different ideas you're going to blog about, it's a good idea to make different blogs for it. Mixing content that is not related is not good for your SEO. Your website, your blog should focus on a particular topic with some tangential things. But if I've got a web design company and suddenly I'm blogging about dog walking, that doesn't really relate unless I'm blogging about how I made this amazing website for the dog walking business. But if it doesn't relate like that, then it shouldn't be on the same blog. So you should see when you've gone to my sites, do you see the link that says WP Admin? Right there. Click WP Admin. And that takes us to the dashboard. The previous screen that we were looking at was sort of like the training wheels. 
Um, they're useful to a degree, but I, I would rather go directly here without the training wheels because most tutorials or books or whatever on the subject that you read about WordPress are never really addressing this other screen over here. They're all assuming you've got a self-hosted WordPress that has the full dashboard. So as long as we're looking at our dashboard here, we're fine. Anyone need a little help catching up there to the dashboard? Okay, so on my handout, during the first break you can print it out, but on the handout here, I've got several points in the writing section. So we're going we're gonna to hit all of these. The very first item that I have here is frequency. No matter your schedule, the important thing is to blog consistently. Start off with a once a month blog if you're not used to blogging. Once a week is better. Once a, once a day is best. The point here is the more content you put out, the more your online presence grows, and popularity breeds popularity. And then that helps your SEO. So if you're only blogging once a month, your stuff is going to get lost in the constant deluge of blog posts and tweets and Facebook updates and so forth. So as you blog more often, once a month to start off with, once a week, once a day, twice a day, the better. Obviously if you're the only person blogging, you're going to have a hard time blogging once a day. That's why previously I said, are you going to have guest writers, ghost writers, paid writers, other people in your company? So you're going to resolve to at least once a month. If you feel more confident, do it more, of course. Uh, I'll show you how to do it in a moment, but what we can do is set up WordPress to schedule your posts. We can write several short blog posts in one day and schedule them to automatically be posted for us once a month. And therefore, I've got three months worth of content that will automatically be published. That's a very powerful tool, and I'll show you how to do it very soon. Well, if we're resolving to write once a month, how much should I be writing? If you're new to blogging, 100 words on a regular basis is a good start. If you're not putting anything extra online, if it's just your website at the end, okay, that's, that's the minimal. But as you start to populate your website and the web, 100 words here, 100 words there, 300 is better. If you're blogging once a month, you can vary between 100 to 300. So if you're adding more and more, hundreds of words per month, per week, that is increasing your presence online and uh, that's part of one of the the ways to get traffic create content um, share it that helps you get traffic so a good goal 100 words and we're gonna see in WordPress as we start to write it'll give us a, a word count so it'll tell us how close or far we are from that goal and you'll see actually you're probably gonna fill up 100 words faster than you thought and that's fine go for 200 Go for more. I wouldn't really think about writing 1,000 words, let's say, because that could be broken up into several installments. If you write 1,000 words and divide it into part one, part two, you've got two months of content right there. 500 words each. Well, you can even divide it into three installments, 300, 300, 400 words, right? Um, so 100 words to start off with is a good goal. The more, the better. When you actually write a post, we'll see here, okay, title. Try for a short, memorable, and direct title. Think in terms of content that people need and want to read. My review on the Toshiba T75, a winner. So I've got the keyword, review. I've got a keyword of the particular product, Toshiba T75. And then also within the title, I've given, and this is optional, but I've given an opinion or I've given a little bit more info than just literal keywords. I've written here that it's a winner. This could entice people. Okay, why? Why is that a good computer? Uh, if it was a negative review, I might have put in there, like, uh, neg my negative thoughts on the Toshiba 75, and then take it from there. So first thing that we'll do is we'll write a title. So back to WordPress here. On the left side, you have a variety of screens. Hover over put your mouse hover over posts and then click add new you might get a pop-up about distraction free writing you can just click to dismiss that if you don't see it that's okay 
and then here we have the WordPress post creator. These are your blog posts, your articles. Before we do anything here, WordPress is very powerful software and it has lots of features and some of them are hidden because not everyone needs some of these features. Let's look at some of the hidden features that are available to us. Even though we've got a lot of little buttons and screens and tabs and all of that here, there's still some that are hidden and some that might be useful to you. So if you look on the top right corner, you'll see something that says screen options. Almost every screen in WordPress has screen options. Click on it, screen options, and notice some options are turned on and some of them are not. Turn all of them on for a moment. And so you'll see that you have more boxes, more settings, more options and such. So it makes the invisible visible. Yes. So you might not need a few things, so you can easily turn it off if you don't want clutter. But as we write this blog post, I'll, I'll mention what these different boxes are for as we get to them. I'm turning them all on for the moment, and then as we write, then I'll explain why you might this why you want, why you might want this one or might not care about that one, and advice for this and that. But I'm going to close the screen options. And the very first thing we have here is a is a page is a post title. This post title is very important because this is going to be. Um, part of helping people find your posts. This is where if someone does a Google search or a Yahoo search or a Bing search and they get a page of results, this is the first thing that they'll see. When someone looks up, for example, how to blog, and I've got these results. How to blog, the steps to a successful blog start. How to start a blog, beginner's guide for 2015. Um, daily report, how to play the vacation gap be between startups and public, how to start a blog, the free beginner's guide to blogging. So, as I said on the sheet, this is a Google search. As I said a moment ago, as I said a moment ago, the title should be memorable, it should get the word, it should get the point across, so inspiration Look at what other people have written. If you're about to write another article, if you're going to write about to write your own article on how to blog, maybe you should look up what others have done to get ideas. So I'm seeing terms like free, how to, beginners, revealed, how to start. So a lot of people are using the same words: how to start, how to, how to. That's what I looked. That's what I searched for. But inspiration from searching also might lead you to, for example, related searches. How to create a blog. How to blog effectively. Blogging tips. I might get ideas on what I could write by doing a search. So if you don't know what to search, what how to start your, your title yet get inspiration from others. You should already have in your back pocket those ideas of what you're going to write about. We talked about it last time. Some people volunteered and we give them advice. If you didn't volunteer, I can help you during the, the, the lab time. But let's say you have an idea and uh, we're going to write about it. So this, which we'll write here, it can be real or it can be just to learn it and you can delete it later. You might already have a real website and such but I just want to write something here to, to get on, on track. So I'm going to say this is my, my web design company, and I want to write an article here, a blog post about something useful, how to blog. I want to give my advice on how to blog. So if I simply title this how to blog, that's not very effective. Blogging may be easy. So what I could do is focus on a more specific niche, perhaps, a target audience. In my other classes I talk about you should have a target audience. Who are you writing, who, who are you selling yourself to? So let's say I'm going to write a blog post for potential restaurant owners. So I could focus on that. The restaurant 
owners guide to blogging. Here I'm focusing on a demographic, restaurant owners. Yes, this could apply to a variety of other bloggers. But really, the thing about modern search is people are looking for something specific, even if they don't quite know it yet. And so if I'm going to be targeting in my web design company to make websites for restaurants, I have to think about what's the content that I can create that will appeal most to that target audience, that demographic. So the Restaurant Owner's Guide to Blogging. I can, of course, change that if I want later. But I've got a keyword of restaurants, a keyword of guide, and blogging. And so let's say that's my title for the moment. I could change it later. I make a click inside of the, the, the main text editing area. Back to my to my notes here. Frequency left title description. In about 150 characters, you should be able to explain what your post is about to people who come across it in a search results page. Entice them to click and read. Okay, so if my title I'm not going to write a whole paragraph on my title. As I said, I've got to keep it short to a point because it's also related to how much space you have on a search results page. Notice those titles there are one line. Those titles are one line. And so you don't have a lot of space to write something really long. Where you, have the long, where you have the space to write something a little longer is this description here. This is what I'm saying. You have a little bit more space to write a better description. And in WordPress, if we scroll down, we'll find a box called Excerpt. Sometimes that Excerpt box is hidden, and that's why I said that under Search op uh, Screen Options at the top, you have a variety of boxes. So if you don't see Excerpt on your own WordPress site, it's probably because excerpt is turned off, turned off. And so if you scroll down, you'll find excerpt. Excerpts are optional handcrafted summaries of your content that can be used in your theme. So I'm going to say that they are not optional because this is what could inform this text that appears here. And again, this is your first chance to make a good impression people are blogging, people are writing, people are searching, and so when they see this page full of results, these top 10 ones are usually what people will click on, even though I've got 964 million results. So I wrote in my notes in about 150 characters, not words, characters, which includes letters and numbers and spaces and symbols and all of that. In 150 characters, you should be able to explain what your post is about. Think about it in terms, again, about how um, you can catch someone's attention. Like this, I see here. Here's an important read if you want to make money with your blog a few of the things you must disclose. If you want to make money blogging, stay out of legal trouble and build trust with your audience. You should disclose affiliate links, etc. So write something, a short paragraph, 150 characters, again to explain a little bit more what your, what your blog post is about. This is just that one post, not the whole site. We have to build this piece by piece. So in my case, I could write something like, every website needs a blog post, even your restaurant. Blogs are great for getting site traffic, social shares, and in general, helps your 
SEO. So I'm explaining to a potential reader, a potential user that is searching, they knew that they needed to blog. Maybe they're not a restaurant, but maybe they're a business. And so here I'm saying every website needs a blog, even your restaurant. So I'm being specific to the target audience, but I'm saying in general also, blogs are great for all of these reasons, like SEO. And more and more people are learning about, thinking about, and implementing SEO. SEO was very esoteric a few years ago. Companies didn't know they needed to do this. They just thought, well, I'm going to show up on Google when people search my product. Yeah, you and 10 million other people. So once you optimize your website with SEO, you'll get more traffic. So here I am explaining that for the specific target audience and for the populace in general. So, the <coughs> so those two things are very important because they're your first impression that you give people when they search your title and this excerpt, this description. Uh, I'm going to skip number five in my notes for the moment. I'll come back to it. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it, but first we'll look at six headings. Take advantage of heading 1, heading 2, etc. They are useful for breaking up a wall of text into readable sections and help the search engines understand your content. So if I were to look at one of these particular blog posts as an example, I see that they are following that particular advice. I think this is uh, a very long article that I would have loved to break up into multiple parts, but also notice it was written 10 years ago. It's pretty rare that old, such old content is still that relevant, but this must mean that this particular post was so well written, it's still so linked to, maybe it's even been updated, that it's still relevant. But the point is that it is... See, it's got 68 comments and so forth. The point is that, kind of like... Um, my syllabus, or even this handout here of these tips, uh, when I gave you the syllabus and you looked at it, maybe you didn't read it line by line, maybe you saw something that caught your attention and then you read that, uh, I divided up the syllabus into sections using headings. I see that here. There's a section heading up here, learning about blogging and how to blog. What's the difference between a website and a blog? and then other blogging for fun, education, and publicity. So there's these different sections that perhaps catch my attention. How do you get the uh, subheadings inserted into your text? Everything that I'm talking about in theory, I will show us in practice. Okay. So this particular heading catches my attention, perhaps. Blogging tips. So I'm going to stop and read that. That's the point of setting up headings because people unfortunately don't read from beginning to end anymore like a regular book especially on a website where it's a little more awkward to read you can hold a book or a paper easily here it's on a screen in front of you where you have to kind of abnormally hold your neck even if you've got it on the mobile device it's not the most comfortable so by dividing the content into sections with headings it helps break up your big wall of text and lets people jump to the section that they want. And so in WordPress here, the way that we would add that, by default that's hidden. It's not easily, it doesn't show you right away how do I add headings. Because I've got very few editing buttons at the moment. I can do bold and quotes and so forth. These are kind of limited. 
So it's hidden inside of this button at the very end of the line, which is toggle tool or toolbar toggle. Click on toolbar toggle. And now you've got a few more editing options like undo, cut and paste, and so forth. But more importantly, you've got something that says paragraph. That's the style. And once you activate, or once you click on paragraph, then you'll see there's heading one, there's heading two, and so forth. So in my notes, I'm saying we want to take advantage of using headings for several reasons. One is that it breaks up a website or a blog post so that people can digest it better. Number two, the search engines like that as well, because it shows that you've written a well-crafted post. The search engines want to show the best content to, to people, not just people that follow all the tricks and techniques and underhanded uh, concepts, but actual content. Did you symbol? Did you turn on toggle tool? Toggle on, yeah. Did you click on paragraph? And so if we divide up our content with these headings, then that's uh, going to go a long way for you. Now what I'm going to say is don't use heading 1 actually, because WordPress automatically adds heading 1 for you in your title. So your title is automatically heading 1. And therefore, if you write something else over here, how to set up GoDaddy and you write some stuff here and write some more stuff here how to get paid and then you select heading 1 heading 2 the concept of this is sound but actually not the execution because WordPress automatically sets up heading 1 for your title and the search engines don't like more than one thing labeled heading 1 the idea be behind heading one, it's the, mo it's the biggest, most important uh, item on the page. And therefore, if we've got two, they're fighting with each other. Heading two heading ones, that, that doesn't quite work. The search engines will tell you when they, opt when they analyze your page, multiple heading ones. So the point of that is don't set another thing to heading one. Set it, start with heading two. Question? I notice there's no option to select font or size. Yes, unfortunately, this is something that WordPress themselves need to address. It's very limited in terms of fonts and sizes and so forth. It's kind of take it or leave it as is here, based on your template as well. If your template has a bunch of built-in fonts and sizes, it, it applies itself here. But we don't have an option like Word to increase font size or even change fonts. You can do it in a different way that I'll show you, but it's not, it's not as straightforward as it could be. Maybe the next version they'll address from that. From another document and get the, the font size you want? If you paste it, um, yeah, if you don't use this paste button here, that'll only give you the text if you do a cut, cut and paste with your keyboard shortcuts. I believe that will give you some of it. So if you use your keyboard shortcuts, I believe that should be able to give you your format. Yeah. So if you do your keyboard shortcuts, yes. Okay. And including uh, including graphics? No, usually not graphics. Okay, just text and with the font that you chose. Yeah, but I still wouldn't do that. I wouldn't take my text from from some other place with a copy and paste. Oftentimes that also copies and pastes weird remnants of the original document that you don't want. So I would say don't do not do that. We are limited to some of our formatting and such, but again, it's really more about the content. You know, it's about what's in the present, not the wrapping. So I wouldn't worry too much about bringing in that perfect text, design and color and all of that. It's more about the text and the content. When you go to GoDaddy, do you get more options on text than you do on WordPress Basic? No, it's the same. So what's also ambiguous about this headings, okay, like I'm saying, don't use heading 1, technically, uh, because heading 1's already used. Start with heading 2, but you don't have to then number them all sequentially. I don't have to have 
heading 2 and heading 3 and heading 4. So if this is my blog post, Restaurant Owner's Guide to Blogging, um, I could say, uh, for example, uh, first get a self-hosted account. Follow or get inspiration from your peers. I'm building up these sections of my post. I'm using headings. I set this first heading on screen as a heading 2, and I'm not going to set the next one as heading 3, because this is still a hierarchy. Heading 1 is heading 1 because it's the title. That title represents the whole blog post, heading 1. Heading 2 represents a section where I'm going to write a bunch of stuff and add pictures and bullet points and all of that. It's a section, kind of like chapters, vaguely. So therefore, if I set this as heading 2 and then this one as heading 3, that doesn't make logical sense. Heading 3 would make sense if it's a subsection of heading 2. I'm not going to simply label heading 2, heading 3, heading 4 because it's a new section. I'm going to label them when necessary for structure. So for example, first set up a hosted account, and if then this point was um, free options, blah blah blah, paid options, that would make sense to set as a heading 3. This heading 2 is the main concept. Get a self-hosted account. Heading 3 is related to that concept. And, and another heading 3 is still related to heading 2 concept. So that's what I'm getting at. This is when I would use the subheading 3, 4, 5, whatever, when there's subsections of a main section. And then another larger section is the heading 2. So that could have its own heading 3 and 4 if necessary. But do you see what I'm getting at? I think of sort of these as uh, chapter headings, heading 2. And then the big H1 is the title of the whole book, this whole blog post. How many to add, of course, is up to you, but what, would, what should make sense is, based on what you've written, where can I divide it up? Where does it make sense to start a new section? Again, get inspiration about what others have written. This particular blog post is really big, but let me see another example where it's not so expansive. Okay, for example, this is a good one. This is another s quick search that I did. How do I start a blog and to make money online? Uh, so this is from August this year. Very timely. Last updated. And so this has got a heading 1, which is added automatically as soon as you wrote the title. And then they made a heading 2, who should use this guide. So then that guides my attention to that, so I might read that. And later on, blog setup, that's another heading. Creating content for your blog, that's another heading. So these different sections are divided where I can then jump to the thing I care most about, site optimization. Maybe I won't read everything here, but this stands out here, so I jump to this and read further. And notice, these are lists. This is information in bullet points or numbered 
For example, this is how to get started in, in a clear numbered order, 1 through 10, which obviously means you want to accomplish step 5 before you accomplish step 6. So a numbered or an ordered list. And this one is a bullet point list. It's not literally a bullet point, but it's a bullet point list uh, with, a qu with a couple of questions. So my notes here say lists use either bullet points or numbered lists. And they're useful because they create bite-sized pieces of content that people can consume easier. Your title might derive from the type of list you've written. So if I'm going to write a blog post about the top three WordPress tutorials, well now I've got a list where I can number one, two, three, or three, two, one. And as we talked previously, lists are very useful and, and good kinds of blog posts to write because again they're digestible. You can you can see that you've got a beginning, middle, and end. I've got three things to read. I've got ten things to read, rather than something that I don't know where, when it's going to end, and therefore I don't know how much time to devote to it. So if I make a top five list, people can get in their minds that I can get through this. I can read this. I can I can work with this. I can I like it. I can share it. You don't have to have a specific number. It doesn't have to be top three, top ten. It doesn't have to be any logical number, really. I've seen the top 37 restaurants in San Diego. Why 37? Who cares? It's a list, and I got on the list. So you can decide what kind of list to create, and I'll show you right here. Let's say we're writing, um, write a series of posts in my section here. I'm saying I'm going to list three kinds of, I'm going to list three kinds of blog series posts. So I could say um, ideas on blog posts. I could have how to, how to series. I could have a uh, testimonials series. And then I could have offbeat. And if I want to turn those into bullet points, you can select which ones will be the bullet points. And in your toolbar here, you've got there, bulleted list. Bullet points. Remember, the bullet point list doesn't need to be in any order. That's the point of it. It's just a collection of concepts. But if I need to have something in order, this, these don't need to be in order, but next to that I've got numbered list. And if I click the button of numbered list, well then I get a numbered list. Obviously a numbered list is great for um, recipes or, or directions of something. Do this, then this, then that. Don't do number three before doing steps one and two. So my notes say, where appropriate. I should say a caveat. I don't know if I have it on my notes here. My caveat is you don't have to do all of these. The, most of the, the more of these that you can do, the better. Because if you're not doing any of them, that's bad. If you're doing a couple of them, that's better. If you're doing more of them, that's better. But you don't have to do all of them. You don't have to artificially put a list on all of your blog posts. I'm just saying, it, use these as appropriate. Um, like these lists. Yes? The funny thing is that I'm a, that I I've had experiences where I've lost things, so it makes me paranoid. But I think uh, WordPress nowadays, the newer versions are smart enough to save for you. But that's a very good point because the way I like to do it, and I was getting ahead of myself, the way I like to do this is I like to write a little bit and then click save draft. That way. For myself, I know that there's a version saved of it, but I'm pretty sure WordPress saves for you anyway. The newer versions, if you've got WordPress 2.0 or 1.0, maybe not. But I'm pretty sure with 3.0 and up, and we've got 4. Point whatever, I'm pretty sure they save. Now, for myself, I'm still in the, in the habit of, I write a little bit, I save draft, just in case. And then it'll start to save itself automatically after that. So go ahead and save draft. You might not see a save draft yet unless you've um, 
unless you've um, verified your email address. So it's a good idea to save once in a while, at least one time. So there's a little note that says draft saved in seven times. Yeah, I see that sometimes for people. You see it. Does anyone else say sa draft saved with a time? Mm -hmm. Let me see it there too. Some people see it, some people don't. That's why I'm saying I'm paranoid. I don't know why for some people it shows up and sometimes it doesn't. So how do you verify your... You go to your email account and click the button that says verify. So I've written here then a, um, a list. And that's one of the things that we can do. Depending on your content, you could add a list if it's relevant. Where do I find my email account? This is, a, uh, this is a personal thing. I can help you individually. Please ask questions related to the whole class. Oh, okay. But I, without that, I can't say draft. Exactly. We, um, we created our, our this blog last week. You should have gotten the email to verify. So again, again, that's an individual thing. Let's, let's move on for the moment, and then uh, I can help during the break, which is coming up very soon. So... Um, lists depending on what makes sense for you you can uh, you can apply it um, and they're useful because they break up the the post you might think that you're writing an amazing blog post but you're so close to it you're obviously going to think it's good but it might be a little hard to read sometimes for people so if we divide it up with headings and if we um, use lists where necessary that helps people read your content easier and that's what we want. We want readable content for people to, to come back to it, to share it, and for the search engines to rank us well. So let's take a break at this point. And when we come back, we'll look at the, the rest of the, of the tips here. You might want to save. And it's 7.15. We'll be back at 7.25. And then we'll go on. <laughs>